Now there's the live scene at Iowa Speedway, and the pictures tell the story. Nationwide Series teams have come out from the garage to retrieve their race cars, bring them back in, and put them up for the night. This race has been postponed because of that uh, second rain shower that fell and dampened this racetrack. And more on the radar that's on the way. So tomorrow, a little early racing, 11 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN2 for the Nationwide Series here at Iowa. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things that it, you see, it's this racetrack how it may change, obviously, no rubber, but going to be in the sunshine tomorrow where they were thinking they were going to race at night. Some adjustments to be made. Yeah, I'm not sure what NASCAR is going to allow them to do for adjustments to the cars. They typically don't let them touch them really other than just put new air cleaners on them and let them race. But you're right. A lot of teams expected a, a nighttime race, a cool racetrack. It's going to be totally different tomorrow. I uh, don't know what the forecast is, but we can probably expect some sunshine. And it'll be totally different for the Penske 22 because Joey Logano will be headed back to Pocono and will drive his Sprint Cup Series machine in that race. And so it will will be uh, Ryan Blaney that will be behind the wheel of that 22 car here tomorrow. Ryan ran the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race Friday night down in Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, came up here. Now is going to get a chance to run the Nationwide Series race here on Sunday. Yeah, we heard Joey Logano earlier in the day talking about how much effort he put into trying to run this race. He wanted to run here, uh, was going back and forth to Pocono, and hated that, that it was going to be for nothing if it rained it out. But it looks like he'll have to just go back to Pocono and not race here now. Yeah, and we've talked about opportunity race. Well, here's another opportunity opportunity for Ryan Blaney to to get in this car and uh, show his talents once again we've seen him in the nationwide series and seen him perform very well and I'm sure uh, it won't take him very long to get acclimated to that race car tomorrow Joe Nibacek the other driver scheduled to run in Pocono tomorrow as well as here in Iowa tonight and we'll see what Joe's play uh, plans end up being as a result of the rain out so a green racetrack and uh, probably a very limited opportunity to make adjustments on the cars are the challenge that will face these teams when they go racing at 11 a.m. Eastern time. That's 10 o'clock local time. Some of these drivers, that's, that's a little earlier than they're used to being up, going <laughs> yeah, to better, work. They've been getting bad here before too long. But Hey, uh, we need to, too. Yeah. It's been a long <laughs> night for us. <laughs> so uh, a little uh, early racing on Sunday for the NASCAR Nationwide Series here at uh, Iowa Speedway. When the green flag waves, it goes from a night race to a day race and brings on a whole different set of challenges. And we'll look forward to all of the things we discussed tonight, the opportunity for some of these drivers to take advantage of the spotlight all to themselves and see if they can take home a trophy. Yeah, who's going to jump up there and, and take that opportunity and, and everything that, that goes along with that and get themselves uh, closer uh, to that points lead that Regan Smith has right now? Yeah, you see some people, even like Brian Scott, we got Drew Herring, and just so many guys that are just looking forward to this opportunity. And I'm sure they're ready to go tonight, but they'll have to just get some sleep, be ready to go tomorrow. So, rained out tonight here in Newton, Iowa for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. We will get the green flag very quickly after that and go racing for 250 laps around this 7 8 miles short track and see who takes home the trophy at the end of the day. Shane couldn't get it tonight, but really appreciate you hanging with us. Unfortunately, we didn't get it done. <laughs> we'll try it again try. tomorrow. The live scene at the Iowa Speedway in Newton, Iowa. As ESPN welcomes you to our season-long coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Today, race 12, postponed last night from rain. Now one lap from starting on this 7 8 mile oval. The track is dry. The field is on the speedway. And we'll go green this next time by Austin Dillon in the three. Sam Hornish Jr. in the 12 will lead the field to the green flag. Alan Bestwick along with Hall of Famer Dale Jarrett and champion crew chief Andy Petrie, our entire ESPN NASCAR crew here. Quick uh, thought on our Kawasaki keys to the race today. Yeah, no mistakes is the first thing uh, by the drivers, whether it's on the track or on pit road. And if I'm a driver, I want my pit crew and my crew chief to get things right from in the pits, give me the best chance to win. Yeah, you know what I want? I want a driver in that car that wants it the most. This is a great opportunity race. A, guy, a lot of guys out here need a win. I want my guy to want it bad. Joey Logano back in Pocono to run the NASCAR Sprint Cup race. Joe Nemechek as well. Ryan Blaney drives the Penske 22. Kevin LePage starts Nemechek's 87 car today. And with that, after a fairly lengthy delay, the weather has cooperated and we are ready to go racing in Iowa. Who takes advantage of the opportunity race for the NASCAR Nationwide Series? with a big run off of turn two in that outside lane, which I thought might be a little bit tricky this morning.
Sam leads lap one by a foot or so. See, Austin Dillon really drive it down in the corner in turn one, though. It's clear. Yeah, Austin got a nice jump on the start, but he was look, like he was a little bit timid going down in turn one with good reason. Very green racetrack these drivers are on right now. Other names different than you normally see in the Nationwide Series. That is Drew Herring in the 54. Scheduled to run this race for Joe Gibbs Racing. Kyle Busch concentrating on his Sprint Cup effort in Pocono this weekend. And Herring, the 26-year-old. Oh, trouble turn two. Brad Sweet in the five. Brad had a little trouble in qualifying as well. And Kevin Swindell in the 98. what looks like maybe a wrap off one of the other cars. It's Kenny Wallace's car. Yeah, that's what I thought it looked like. I didn't see Kenny Wallace's car, but I did see the wrap. A lot of damage to Brad Sweet. It's Kenny in the 29. Ooh. 44 was Cole Witt. Yeah, certainly an error there. So, we started, finally, at Iowa, and we went under caution that quickly. Trouble in turn two, first yellow is out. Going back racing in one more lap after the first caution of today's DuPont Pioneer 250. NASCAR Nationwide Series race under yellow for the first time with a mistake, I guess is the best way to say it, by Cole Witt entering turn one. We look from Ryan Blaney's view. It looked like he thought that he had a lane down there on the bottom, but obviously there wasn't enough room there. The damage to Brad Sweet's car. It's such a disappointment as a driver. You've waited around, anticipate, especially like in Brad Sweet's case, Kevin Swindell, they, they don't get many chances at this and the anticipation and then have it all go away that quickly. Kevin Swindell has taken his car to the garage. By the way, that was not part of the wrap off Kenny Wallace's car. That was a banner apparently that got uh, taken down from the fencing in that incident a minute ago. Going to add another lap of caution before we go back racing. Gives us a moment to tell you about the NBA final. Oh, you got to like the heat at home. Turn it up a little bit. Yes. Get that thing back even. So let's try this again. One more lap to go before the restart. Dave Burns is covering Brad Sweet for us today. And Alan, one of the intricacies for today's race is the changing of pit crew members. Both junior motorsports drivers have different spotters this weekend. And for uh, Brad Sweet, Donnie Tarantino was scheduled to be a spotter today. They worked on their communication together. There may have been some miscommunication with Brad as he got down into the turn and was spun. But uh, a lot of different people working around today. And for Brad, as they try to fix that car and get back in the race, there are some new faces and voices for him today. Never a comfortable thing. Awful lot of damage to the Brad Sweet car. And uh, as I mentioned, Kevin Swindell back in the garage with the 98 car. Fix it up, get it back out, get some more experience. Get a green flag here. Hornish 12 outside of Dillon 3. Again, Sam Hornish powers on the outside around, gets the lead from Austin Dillon. Track's really rough down uh, on the bottom in between one and two. So Austin Dillon, even though he chose that inside, he had to be a little bit careful there. You find yourself in trouble. Don't want to do that this early in the race. Third place, Brian Vickers, 20. Brian Scott, 2. Elliot Sadler right behind them. Well, you can see Vickers there kind of had to get out of it. He was going to be up into the side of Brian Scott. Had a pretty good squeeze last lap up in three and four also, and Vickers' nose started pushing wide off the corner. See if it happens again. Better grip that time. If you weren't with us last night, we talked about this being the first standalone race of the year and an opportunity for drivers like Vickers and Elliott Sadler who need to get going this season. A chance for them to try and get a win, give themselves and their teams a boost. There's Herring in the 54 and the championship leader Regan Smith in the 7. Now Sadler up there uh, trying to get around his teammate Vickers just looking for somewhere to go whenever they were running side by side. Elliott Sadler in that 11 and one of his best tracks statistically of the Nationwide Series. Finished third, second, and first in his last three races here.
a lot of grip out there. Lap times are pretty quick. We've got overcast skies, green racetrack. It's good for speed and grip, but uh, the tire wear might be a little bit high this first run. Watching Ryan Blaney in this 22. Just picture yourself coming to the racetrack. Actually, Friday night he was at Texas Motor Speedway running the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race. Came here to the racetrack yesterday just in case the race didn't get in. Now jumps into this car today for Joey Logano. Not turned a lap of practice in it all weekend. In fact, hasn't turned a lap in this car all season. And here he is trying to run from the back. Yeah, and it may seem simple, but this is not his seat in the race car. The pedals weren't in where he would want it and everything, so they he's really getting in there doing a nice job you can see he was three wide right there looks pretty comfortable in six place here drew herring 54 seven regan smith yeah another guy drew herring not a lot of seat time actually no seat time this year doing a great job in the 54. so andy let's let's go a little general for a second on conditions all of these drivers like regan smith were watching are dealing with track conditions much different than when they last practiced here uh now two days ago yeah, there's no rubber on the racetrack. We had quite a bit of rain. Uh, they were planning on a night race, and they had the car set up for maybe a little bit different condition. But the track is going to wear these tires quite a bit this first run, and the track's probably going to go through a little bit of change, and they, they really want to try to keep up with it. They need to get a lot of input uh, from the driver to figure out what to do on this first pit stop. Yeah, the good thing for them, I think, for probably the driver's standpoint, is that it is very overcast, so, and the temperature hasn't gotten up this morning, so the racetrack is still pretty cool. Parker Kligerman, 77. Kyle Larson, 32. This is for ninth place. We talked to Kyle Larson last night. He's very confident that he would have a chance to win today. Looks like he's got a good car. But he seems, and we did talk about this last night as well, he's very good in the second half of the race. He spends the first half basically trying to figure out what his car needs and what he needs. And, uh, and by the second half, he's got it dialed in. Yeah, a lot of these times, though, he's been racing outside that top 10 and then making up a lot of ground. He can find himself up inside that seventh or eighth spot and then still improve. He'll find himself battling for victory like he wants to here today. And Kligerman, steady, solid, consistent start to the season in this 77 and looking to gain some ground in the championship in these standalone races over the course of the summer. For now, hangs on to that ninth spot over Larson. Love watching the eyes through the clear shields. Yeah, and already see the difficulty in trying to make a pass down on the bottom. Very rough racetrack on the bottom, so it makes it tough. Austin Millen and Sam Hornis Jr. started on the front row, the only two drivers that have led the race so far. But we're just underway, though finally underway. <laughs> Hornish leading in the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Iowa. At the Iowa Speedway, we remind you to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Lead change just as we were coming back for the break. Austin Dillon squeezing by Sam Mortis Jr. on the run from turn four to turn one. Yeah, I started to make the comment before we went to commercial that uh, Sam Mortis looked like he was kind of pulling away, but things changed. The Austin Dillon's car really coming in to him right now and makes the pass look easy. Yeah, I talked to Danny Stockman, and he said that the last few weeks they've had fast race cars, but they've been real finicky. And uh, they, they went with a little different setup here today that they feel like it's going to be more consistent over the long run, and it looks like that's what's happening here. Something we talked about last night, you mentioned earlier this track is a little bit bumpy, and this three team and its driver have excelled on the bumpy tracks. They won both races at Kentucky Speedway last year, which is fairly bumpy compared to some. So Austin Dillon back out in front after starting on pole. Let's check in the garage. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Hey, guys. Kevin Swindell thought he had a great race car. Unfortunately, damaged in that first shunt. Now, he's back in the garage area, and John Hansen and company back here trying to cut the splitter bar brace out from the left front fender to get the fender off the tire, having to use the hydraulic port of power to move that away and be able to get the tire back on before they can send him out. Tough break for a guy that runs a limited schedule, hoping to have a good run, but starting in the garage today. Swindell involved in the accident at lap number three, and the work continues on his car. Hey, what's Sam Hornish here? You see Brian Scott's closed up on him trying to take that second spot away. I wonder if Hornish, in thinking about the three car coming on later, his car looked a little bit loose at the start. Hornish was probably a little bit on the tight side, now getting tighter, so he'll look to probably make an adjustment uh, whenever they do pit, probably that competition yellow lap. 
uh, at lap 50. Yeah, let's mention that because uh, I don't think we have mentioned it yet. There will be a competition caution at lap 50. Not unusual for NASCAR in a race where there's been rain involved before the start. Yeah, you can see the racetrack groove starting to come in. You can see it starting to black up. That changes the way the car drives, and it looks like it's kind of gone away from Sam Hornish's setup and probably towards some of the other. So, Rusty Wallace designed this racetrack. Going to borrow a phrase from our friend r -Dub. Ryan Blaney is flat flying. He is. Look at that scoring. Yeah, he gained 19 positions already. 34th up to 15th in a car he'd never turned a lap on this week. Now, this one got a little interesting. Yeah, I think maybe 18 of those spots are fairly easy to get. That one, not so much. Racing Justin Allgaier there in the 31. Dave? DJ mentioned the changes they had to make to this race car for him. Remember, he's not as tall as Joey Logano, so every pedal and the steering wheel and the mirrors, a seat insert, they all had to be changed to make Ryan Blaney as comfortable as he looks there on the left of the screen. So far, the car just a little bit loose, but as you said, he's really going fast. And they said to him before the race started, hey, it's going to be fun to pass all those cars, isn't it? He says, yeah, I'm getting antsy. Last time Ryan Blaney ran an NASCAR Nationwide Series car was the final race of last season at Homestead Miami Speedway. He finished in eighth. He has raced here before in the Nationwide Series. Yeah, and done a nice job. And he was probably the only person last night at the racetrack with a smile on their face as we were trying to go through a rain. And he yeah. knew that if it rained, he was driving his race car, so he was happy. Seven and six, Regan Smith and Trevor Bain racing for a spot, seventh and eighth places. Regan Smith, one of those, you see the yellow stripe on the back bumper of that seven car. Yes, he's the championship leader. No, he's never raced here before, so he is an Iowa Speedway rookie. Yeah, and I think as a driver, even though he has a lot of experience in coming, you don't know that one thing you don't know, you can get used to the racetrack, but how does it change throughout this and, and keeping up with it? And, and obviously, it's going from a drink, green track to, to getting rubber down, as Andy was pointing out. So uh, a lot of things that Reed is going to go through, but doing a nice job here running the seventh spot so far. Racing Drew Herring in that 54 car for sixth place. Well, Drew doing a nice job here, too, for a young man that hasn't raced in about nine months, uh, been in his car doing a good job obviously has a fast car but just uh, getting used to racing again uh, takes a little bit but uh, going excellent Austin Dillon has checked out a little bit from second place Sam Hornis Jr. Mike uh, yeah, he has, and he certainly has a very good race car and some motivation coming into this weekend. You remember back to August here in Iowa last year? That car dominated. However, their run, which they led 53 laps, was spoiled because of a loose wheel. Coming into this race, I spoke with his crew chief, Danny Stockman, and he said yes, and I quote him, he says, we're racing today with a chip on our shoulder. As for what's on Austin Dillon's mind coming to this race, I spoke with him this morning, and he said one thing winning. The car's just getting a little bit loose as the race goes on, but certainly their focus is singular. That's going to victory lane. All right, Mike, thanks. Dylan out in front of Sam Hortis Jr. by 1.1 seconds. Black flag being shown for Brad Sweet, who has shown some smoke from the five car after damage from the accident he was involved in back at lap number three. Competition caution and pit stops coming up. Austin Dillon leading Iowa Speedway in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Live from Iowa Speedway, the NASCAR Nationwide Series under green after being rained out last night. 43 laps in, competition caution coming at lap 50. Sam Hornish Jr. and Austin Dillon have been the two drivers that have led all of the laps so far. Dillon has checked out from Hornish after passing him a little bit ago. Hornish got his hands full now, racing for second in lap traffic. Hornish in the yellow 12. Brian Scott in the two, trying to get that spot from him. Brian Scott's been right there, doing a really nice job here today. He said, uh, told us last night that he had a fast car. He was looking forward to this race and the opportunity to run up front all day. And another guy joining this group, Brian Vickers in that 20. Someone to keep an eye on in this race. Never raced here at Iowa Speedway before. Only ran a few laps in a test uh, a few years back in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series when they were developing the Generation 5 car, the COT. Don't like what I'm seeing on that camera lens, by the way. 
Well, but Trevor Bain's coming, too. He's come from 14th starting spot up here. Now trying to take over that fourth spot from Brian Vickers. Trevor driving for the team that's won three of the last four races here at Iowa Speedway. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. then aboard that Roush Fenway number six. Been a big week for Trevor Bain, Doc. Absolutely got married on Tuesday. Said everything going well in my life. And right now he has the fastest car on the racetrack. The last three laps, he is a half a second faster than the second place car. And now he moves in on the 20 car, trying to take the fourth spot away. And, and by the way, he said the car is very free on entry and has no rear grip throughout the turn. But he's still a rocket right now in the early laps. Little lap traffic jam right now and needing some room to race. He very definitely has a faster car than Vickers. Yeah, he's got to be careful here. Stay off of him. Doesn't want to create a, a bad situation this early in the race because he does have a fast car. You can see Brian Vickers just give that spot up. One thing I've been seeing out of the six cars, but he can really hook the, the very bottom right on that yellow line. He's been really quick, but right there you see he just slipped up off the bottom. Yeah, drove in a little bit hard. But he was trying to kind of make sure that he was going to put a slide job on Vickers. I don't think he realized that Brian was just going to kind of give him that spot. Got to be careful right up there. It's still pretty early. Don't throw it away when you get a car that good, right? No, absolutely not. You know, it's, we've seen some running up in that same group, but there's not as much rubber up there for sure right now. It's got to be one of the hardest things for a driver. You want to race. Oh, oh, there. There, there it is. Vickers. Going for the slide. Caution down. Amazing, that didn't take out Trevor Bain as well. Just before the competition caution, we get the second yellow. Stay down low, get going. Vickers actually got away with it without much damage. I kind of wondered about that three wide move going into turn one, going around the lap car. You can see that uh, Trevor Bain's giving him plenty of room, but they do have this lap car. You get in there, that's a little wider than you'd normally enter there, and he was trying to keep that momentum and just a little too much for the tires to hold that grip. No contact anywhere. You see, Trevor Bain, you can feel that as a driver, that car. You don't even have to see it uh, out of the corner of your eye. You can just feel that car and what's happening. And Trevor did a nice job of moving up, not becoming part of the incident. Pit road is still closed, so it will be another lap or so. What I was just starting to say when that happened was how hard it must be to be patient when you've got a good car and you want to race. You've been waiting to race. You get to race, but you know it's early in the race, but you want to go. <laughs> and now you see the price. You can and there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens when your patient runs out. Well, Vickers has fallen from racing for fourth back to 17th with his spin. But again, it could have been a whole lot worse. These races at Iowa don't generally have a lot of caution flags, Andy, so this is one of only a couple of times a crew chief might get to make an adjustment on this race car. Yeah, but what I've seen so far, though, it looks like we may see more cautions than normal. Yeah. Just look at how the track's coming in or are not coming in. We're not seeing that second groove come up, come in up top as good as I thought we'd see it. So in, in thinking that, though, knowing the history of these races, do you tend to make a little bigger adjustment uh, in that? Yeah, it's a short race, too. So you want to, what you're trying to do is get the best feedback you can get from your driver during this one lap that you have because you want to make a good adjustment here knowing which way the racetrack's going and try to stay ahead of it. Pit road open here. Remember, a lot of substitute pit crews down there. We'll see if there are any mistakes that cost some track position. Doc? Mike Kelly wants Trevor Bain to stop very, very short in the pit so he doesn't get blocked in by the 99. This could be a two pit stop race. They're going to go ahead and put four tires on this first stop, go down one round of the track bar to try to tighten the car up. Dang. Brian Vickers' crew is the one that he always has. They will get it full of Sunoco fuel. They will change four tires and drop the track bar because one of the things that contributed to that spin was his car was loose into the corner. Mike? Two new tire changers on the 12, and they'll change right sides only and get him away. Meanwhile, the three car of Austin Dillon on pit road, your leader taking four fresh Goodyears, and he's away with a full load of Sunoco race fuel. Sam Hornish Jr. will very easily win the race off pit road, and there you see why. Yeah, two tires. We'll see how that works. Little strategy call by Greg Irwin. 
to see how that works out when we go back to racing after the second caution today here in Iowa. Interesting strategy play on the first pit stops of today's race at Iowa Speedway for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Just right side tires for Sam Hornish in the 12 to take the lead. We'll see how that fares as Austin Dillon is to his outside. Our green flag restart presented by Scott's. Little three wide. And Arch 31 of Justin Allgaier also opted for two tires on that. Got him uh, some track position. Last week on our telecast from Dover, it was former nationwide champ, current Sprint Cup champ, Brad Kozlowski, who said, clean air is worth the other two tires when you take the two. Okay, well, he took two tires, had clean air, and now he's lost the lead, so he doesn't have that anymore. <laughs> I'm just not sure about that two-tire strategy at this point. They need six to keep up that three today. Look at this. Elliott Sadler, 11. Justin Allgaier, 31. Regan Smith, 7. Kyle Larson, 32. That's 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. I think that was Regan Smith, the point leader right there, kind of protecting himself. Just having a, a really bad day, kind of backed out of that situation. Brian Scott at the 2. Trevor Bain in the 6th for 3rd. This six team has taken a couple of lumps in the last month or so of racing. A couple of really bad finishes, but the last couple of weeks they've righted the ship. Good solid runs for Trevor Bain. Mike Kelly making a couple of calls, crucial to helping the result. And there seems to be a little bit of extra pep in the step for this team as they came here to Iowa this weekend. Well, there's no doubt that the last couple of weeks, as uh, you see Mike Kelly there on the right, the uh, last couple of weeks helped. They came to a racetrack where uh, this car has, has done extremely well, and they know they have a very talented driver with Trevor Bain there, and uh, he's showing so far today. Looks like this car might be a little bit tight on the exit of the corner from what I'm seeing there. Still doing very well. And Justin Allgaier just taking the two tires is kind of holding up this group behind him. You know, now you see the 54 of uh, Drew Herring and Kyle Larson racing side by side. Larson's trying his best to make this upper groove work and see if he can make a pass up there. I think everybody's seen how difficult it is Whoa. down the bottom. You can see the 31 lose a little bit of grip in the center. Cost him two, three, maybe four spots. Starting to see the sun try to peak out. That'll change the track conditions. If we see that, I'm not sure that we're going to have a sustained uh, sun on the racetrack, but maybe. And there's Brian Vickers in the 20. Remember racing for fourth when he spun. Fell all the way back to 17th, trying to dig his way back forward and make up the lost ground. Yeah, he has a good enough car. If he's just patient here and this race plays out, goes the whole 250 laps, which we certainly expect it to do. He's got plenty of time to get himself uh, situated back in the top five and maybe racing for a victory. Update on the 20 from Dave. Doing fine, Alan. Remember yesterday when we talked to him during the rain delay, Brian categorized coming to a new track for the first time as fun for a veteran driver like him. It's fun to go out and experience, hit the track for the first time, finding your line and knowing how to run it. They were very optimistic in the 20 camp about how he would do today, do today but uh, just mainly nice to know the driver has a nice new challenge for him. And certainly restarting 14th, this will give Brian all he can handle right now. It's going to be hard to make up that track position he lost in that spin, but a lot of racing still to go. Michael Annette just in front of Vickers in the 43 hometowner. Des Moines native, hoping for a great run in front of his home fans. Michael and company saying that since he missed those eight races after the Daytona crash and injury, they've got nothing to lose. Go for it. Championship doesn't matter for them. Regan Smith, 7. Elliott Sadler, 11. 
Drew Herring, 54. Big, big race for Sadler and his team. Group that struggled more than they expected to this season, and they come to a track where Elliott Sadler has been superb results-wise the last few years. Now, I haven't seen the speed out of him so far today, though. It tells me he has a winning race car. Yeah, I was talking to Elliott, and he said that they struggled a little bit in practice, had to make some changes after that. He wasn't gonna, exactly sure what he was going to have uh, with his race car. Now, Ryan Blaney started in the back, charged all the way up to 14th, then spent a long time on the pit road, went back to 23rd for the restart. Now he's trying to pick his way back forward again. He's up to uh, now 14th. So he made up all the ground. They gave up on the pit stop. Meanwhile, Justin Allgaier, you're riding with, restarted in sixth position after taking just the two tires. And now he's back to 15th. So that's a, a net nothing. Yeah, that's not, not a good move there for them. But it looks like Sam Bordish is kind of holding in there in second spot on the two tires. It's not, it's not really helped him any, but it hadn't seemed to hurt him terribly. Travis Pastrana in the picture there as well in the 60. Ooh. You see just how rough this racetrack is right there. Just very, very bumpy. And Justin Allgaier is doing everything he can to make that car go. He's jumping around trying every possible bit of asphalt out there that he can to, to see if he can get going forward with those two tires, but it's just not happening right now. Well, Doc, from the sounds of that onboard, Pastrana's having to wait a while to get that gas pedal all the way down. Absolutely loose and looser and looser. That's the story on Travis Pastrana. Started eight. When the race began, he was loose. He said he had no grip on entry, no grip middle and off. They came in four tires, as you might expect. Added wedge in the left rear, which helped a bit. But this track getting looser and watching this having to go right and left on that steering wheel and feather the throttle just to keep the car from going around on him, entering the corner. He's going to lose some more spots here momentarily. He's going to tighten that car up on the next stop. Now you can see right from the STP telemetry just how much brake he's using and how, hard, how late he is and easy he has to get on that throttle. We can hang on a little bit. That could possibly come around a little bit for him. Uh, could possibly uh, tighten up as we run on. These corners are pretty tight. You can get a little heat in that right front and make it a little bit more bearable. So touched on a lot of different people here in these last few minutes. And while all that's going on, Austin Dillon's trying to run and hide from the pack. Moved away by three and a half seconds from second place Sam Hornish Jr. Still shy of halfway though at Iowa Speedway. Iowa and Newton, Iowa, 30 miles to the east of Des Moines. Cornfields everywhere. The crops are coming up, and the racetrack is busy today as well. The Iowa Speedway hosting the NASCAR Nationwide Series for the first of two times this season. No, it's not John Deere Green leading the field. It's a black number three car, Austin Dillon, who's out in front and dominated so far. Major League Baseball tonight on ESPN. A battle in the National League Central. There's your leader, Austin Dillon. Out in front for 60 of the 82 laps that we've run so far. He and Sam Hornish Jr. started on the front row. They swapped the lead a few times. But Dillon right now has opened up a pretty good advantage. Here's a race for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Brian Scott, two. Regan Smith, seven. Regan Smith, the championship leader in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, mentioned before, coming to a track he's never raced at. His crew chief has never crew chiefed at or been to. And you see, Brian Stroud looks like he's struggling a little bit on the exit of the corner. I've seen the back end of this car wiggle a couple of times. And Trevor Bain continues to roll toward the front. That's second place. This is so Bain rolling forward in that six. Did you make noises like that when you had a good car? I didn't push the button if I did. <laughs> <laughs> Left that radio mic closed, yeah. did you? Hey, that's, that's a good feeling, though. When you know your car is coming to you, you can see some of your competition coming back towards you. Uh, yeah, so I can understand why he's a little excited. His car's good right now. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah, you get excited inside there. and You know, you're passing cars. It's doing what you want. 
when being a race driver is a lot of fun. I think this is probably the time, too, as he made that pass with Sam Hornish, that Hornish's tires are, are kind of giving up uh, with that race car right now. They'll have to make an adjustment. That's the only thing that I could get concerned about, changing two tires. You come the next time, what kind of adjustment do you make? Yeah, not knowing exactly how that's going to react. It does throw you off because you don't know if your car is acting a certain way because of the two tires, or, or is it something you really need to adjust for because you know you're going to change for the next time. But one thing I like about Trevor Bain's car is uh, Trevor Bain's car is really good and smooth over the bumps. I think that's going to pay off for him. And one thing I think we're hearing there from Trevor is needing to make his car a little bit better at the beginning of a run uh, to, to see if they can do that. But, uh, you can see the 12 still just struggling. Looks like he's a little struggling a little bit into the corner. What are they saying, Mike? Well, they're saying right now, Sam, is that he needs to be tightened up, just far too loose for his liking. As for that two-tire change, it sounds like their downtime last night during the rain delay gave him a lot of time to strategize. Right before that stop, Greg Irwin came over the radio. He did not tell anybody publicly what they were going to do. All he told his driver was, we're going to do what we talked about last night. And obviously, it was the two-tire change. Hasn't worked exactly to their liking, but still a long way to go. Well, he's still running third. Yeah, it's not a disaster. It's actually working better than I thought it was going to. Yeah, unless this goes green the rest of the race, which is highly unlikely, uh, it will it'll end up probably not hurting him. We have the championship leader coming into his mirror here pretty soon. The Regan Smith car is going forward. Yep. Talked with Regan about learning a track you've never raced at before. He talked about watching tapes of past races, watching onboard footage, looking at notes from the past drivers from this race team and what they had to say about their cars and their races. Doing all the studying you can, but there's no substitute for making laps. Yeah, that's the, the ultimate challenge here and learning curve. Ryan Blaney. Remember, I mentioned spent a long time on pit road under that uh, caution back at lap number 53. Dave, they've made up all that ground and a little bit more. Yeah, he's all the way up to the 12th position now from 21st restart. Experienced crew, but mistakes can still happen. And there were a series of them. They had a hose catch in the back. You see he stops on his marks, but a hose caught on the back. And uh, they had a hard time getting the left, right rear tire changed. Then actually had a radio knocked off one of the tire changers. So when the two tire stop was called, Ryan gets ready to pull out. They wanted to make a crazy eye, but it changed his two tire stop. But he didn't know that. So they had to back it up and make sure that the tire, which had already been loosened on the left rear, was uh, secure for sure. So a series of things happened. You can see, hear the chaos on the radio, and that's what cost him all those spots. Good news is, very fast race car. And again, one of those spots, Dave, where substitute crew members and so on, not necessarily the normal lineup that's going to pit because some of those guys are off in Pocono today in that Sprint Cup car. And a substitute driver, so this whole you know, the communication lines are, are really kind of unsure of what's going on. Here's fifth place. Two, Scott, 11, Sadler, and 32, Larson. Yeah, I've been watching Kyle Larson. He's using all the racetrack to try to make passes and get the most speed out of his car. You see here, he's going to try to go to the high side of Elliott Sadler. Probably going to make this work, but uh, he may be right in what he told us yesterday, that he has a car to run up front. Yeah, we saw the sun come out, and I think that's really helped this outside lane come in, start to rubber in, and it's starting to pay off for Kyle Larson. Fortunately for Kyle, he's a half a lap behind Austin Dillon. Got a good car, yeah. but got a ways to go before he gets a chance to show us. Yellow bumper on the back of that 32 car, but not the first race that Kyle Larson has driven here. He's run two K&N series races, one silver crown race. Said he looked forward to this race probably more than any other track so far this year because he's run so many laps here before. He's been pretty outstanding on ones that he's never seen before. So while we were expecting big things from him and him expecting big things from himself today also, trying to work his way towards the top five here. So Larson running sixth and trying to chase Brian Scott for fifth. Everybody's chasing that three car.
Austin Dillon, 4.8 seconds ahead of second place, Trevor Bain. Coming up on halfway at Iowa Speedway. Corn's coming up in the fields all around Iowa. Iowa, a race crazy state, some 44 racetracks holding oval track events weekly. One designed by the Hall of Famer, Rusty Wallace, the Iowa Speedway. Seven eighths of a mile track designed after one of his favorite and most successful tracks, the Richmond International Raceway. Took that one, tweaked on it a little bit, stretched it out just a touch. It's a little bit bigger than Richmond, a little bit smaller than Phoenix, and it's a place that a lot of drivers love to race. And today, Austin Dillon's loving it more than anyone, dominating at this stage of today's DuPont Pioneer 250. Still a long way to go, though, not quite at halfway. Just joining us, a race postponed by rain from last night. Two cautions, one at lap three, one at lap 51. Couple of incidents down in turns one and two. And there's the gap from Dillon back to second place, Trevor Bain. It's at five seconds right now. We're on about a 50-lap green flag run at this point. Checking on third place, Regan Smith. Yeah, he's been very solid in this run. Uh, looked like his car started off maybe a little bit on the free side after that restart, but uh, was very patient. Now he's worked his way up to that third spot. Yeah, he's seven seconds back, but he did run the fastest lap on the racetrack last lap. Sam Hortis Jr. started on the outside of the front row, led a little bit in the early going, took just two tires on the pit stops at lap 53. Lost the lead there to Austin Dillon, and you see Sam has drifted back to fourth place and maybe about to lose that to Kyle Larson and Elliott Sadler, 32 and 11, who are closing on his back bumper. Yeah, Kyle Larson had passed Elliott Sadler earlier in this run. It looks like Sadler's car starting to come around now, and he's run back up to the rear bumper of Larson. Yeah, well, I can see Elliott in that 11. Looks like his car's still working really, really good down at the very bottom of the racetrack. Some others struggling to keep their cars down there have moved up uh, a half lane, and in some cases, a full lane. Oh, you see Sam Hornis really loose there. And Elliott got a big run up off the corner. Anytime you talk about short track racing, you want to keep momentum through the center of the corner. That'll help your exit speed. But being able to get the throttle down, we've seen a lot of guys struggling to do that. Elliott Sadler, one of the best that I raced against and with, uh, of really getting his car to where he can get back to the throttle and, and utilize the horsepower up out of the corner. The one thing we know about Larson, he won't give up a spot easily. He's very tenacious. He races hard every single lap. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter for what spot. He doesn't, he, he doesn't hold anybody up. He gives them plenty of room, but he races really hard. That moment for Sam Hornish. 11 to line, 23 to outside. 11, going to give you a shot here. Coming inside, middle three wide here. See right here just how sideways that car was up out of the corner. Sam doing a nice job of holding on to it. He's going to finally give up those two spots. And slip back to sixth place. Yeah. Update on Elliott Sadler from Dave. He's not happy with his car. Obviously, it's a little better than Sam's right now, but his car is loose in as well. And then this cautionary tale on the radio. No way, my right left don't make it the whole run. Uh, put down your nose. 10-4. Just to let you know, ours look the same as the teammates, so you just have to baby it. Goodyear obviously thinks it's going to get better once the rubber gets laid down. But take care of it as much as you can. DJ, we talked about this. A full fuel runs 92 to 95 laps. That was at lap 50 that he was worried about his right front tire. How can a driver feel that it's not going to last? Yeah, what you start feeling is just as that uh, starts to slide across the racetrack just a little bit. But interesting that he's concerned about his right front, but he's loose on the entrance to the corner. So uh, uh, if he just backs that up a little bit, it may help both situations. Yeah, the racetrack was really green. I'm sure they were seeing a, a, a lot higher tire wear than they were comfortable with when they saw that first set come off. But, you know, knowing and pretty confident that the track rubbers in, and that really does get a lot better quickly. Yeah. Elliott's really good, too, about not using excessive brake, and so he's not shouldn't have that problem. It'd just be a matter of the wear that he's concerned about at that right front, I believe. So Sadler there in fifth position, well behind Austin Dillon. Continues to hold a five-second lead over Trevor Bain. 
Approaching halfway today at the Iowa Speedway, the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Couple laps from the cross flags with Austin Dillon dominating so far. He's led 121 of 123 laps. Only other guy that's done some leading today is Sam Hortis Jr. After taking just right side tires on the only set of pit stops, it appears the right side's only strategy not working for either of the two cars that took just the rights. Sam's fallen back a pretty good bit and really seems to be struggling. Yeah, this is the time that uh, as a driver, you're hoping for a caution and you're just hoping you're not it. Mike, these guys are really struggling. They're going to have to hit pit road before long. Yeah, Sam has been saying he has no right rear grip, and uh, that's what he's been struggling with, mostly off the corners. Coincidentally, before the weekend started, he was concerned about their short track package in general, saying they just couldn't get it tight enough at times during these short track races. Well, today it's just the opposite, just way too loose. Yeah, it looks like that car is really loose. He's probably worn that right rear tire out this run. He's slipping back quickly now. We look at Sam working hard from our Ford EcoBoost onboard camera. Now, the other driver that took just right side tires on the pit stops at lap 53 was Justin Allgaier, and he was just on pit road a minute ago for a green flag stop that has left Allgaier two laps down in 26th place. There is Justin. Doc? He kind of had an issue with no grip, and it came in and took two right side tires. It didn't get any better. It actually got worse. But the reason they had to pit a moment ago, they did not get the car full of fuel. Remember, the, the regular pit crew, the uh, Stuart Haas guys are in Pocono. They stay back up pit crew, had an issue getting the car full of fuel, so they had to come in and pit 25 laps early, and it cost him two laps on the racetrack. Ouch. So Allgaier needs this to stay green through a cycle of pit stops to try and get back into uh, the swing of things. Here's Sam Hornis Jr. on the pit lane. Clean the grill, clean the grill. Headed all the way down to Mike Massaro at 40 miles an hour. Yeah, and you just heard we talked about how Sam was looking for a little bit more right rear grip. Well, four tires this time will also make a track bar adjustment going down on that and uh, a Lotus Sunoco race fuel on the 12, trying to give Sam a little bit more comfort in that car, a little bit more stability than, he, than what he had on that last run. He's away in 14 seconds. And so Sam, another one that needs this to stay green until everybody's on and off pit road and he can get back in the cycle. Biz is picking up on the pit lane pretty quickly. Kyle Larson, Drew Herring both in. While Austin Dillon continues to log laps as the race leader. Double dip from Mike. And prior to the last stop, uh, Kyle Larson was complaining he was loose in, tight off. They made an air pressure adjustment and fixed it. He's been rather content since then. So no changes on this car, just a four tire change to the 32. Although now you can see the wrench going in the rear window, a little bit of a chassis adjustment. He said it was a little bit free in, but not bad. So it's only a slight adjustment to the 32 of Kyle Larson. Meanwhile, Drew Herring on pit road. Keep an eye on this pit crew. These are not the same guys that normally pit this car. Kyle Busch's pit crew, who normally pits this car, they're in Pocono. So this is a mishmash of guys. They had a problem on the last stop. This time a, a little bit smoother, but still not as quick as they're used to. Meanwhile, Brian Scott on pit road.